Hi beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Anala and I make crazy related and medical related videos. So as you can see, I am currently at work. I am in my scrubs. scrubs. And I got an idea just now as I was sitting at the table and I was like, let me make a day in the life. And this will probably go into a week in the life of an intern doctor. I hope you guys do enjoy this video and without wasting much more time, let's get straight into it. So as I said, I am currently in my open guide rotation, which is the third rotation of my internship out of two years. So today I am on call in the labor ward and that is from 8 in the morning until 6 p.m. at night. I will not include patients and um, staff in the video unless they are willing of course, but I'm going to limit it to just relating to you guys exactly how um, my day progresses. So I do hope you do enjoy this video. Shortly afterwards, I was called to review another patient in another ward who was a non sickle cell patient with a breech presentation in a prime gravida. That means that this woman was pregnant for the first time and her baby was presenting with the legs first. For such a patient, we take them straight for cesarean section and this was me on my way to go book her for her C-section. I am doing night and the night I'm doing a night call. I start off in the morning at 8 p.m. and do a ward round. Usually it ends around 11, 12, depending on how many people there are. If I'm alone, it can then end at like 14. I go home, I rest, and then I come back at 18 hours for a night shift. So that's what you're going to see majority of today. It's going to be the night shift. But I'm just going to finish up my ward round right now. And after that, I'll probably go home and rest. Much again. I got here at 18 hours. Around 19 hours, two more patients arrived. So the first one was a previous two Caesar. So since she's had two previous Caesars already, automatically this delivery is going to be a C-section because we do not like to put those mothers under the risk of um, potential uterine rupture. And I just did a history, a quick history, and I went and I booked her for C-section. And then the second one was a severe preeclampsia patient. She just came in complaining of a headache and her BP, when we checked it was actually 203 over 135 which is really 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 high and her protein in the urine was 4 plus which is really really high again and so we immediately started our own um, antihypertensives we have started our own magnesium sulfate and we have run so many tests so yeah those are the two patients that have kept me company at least now i have a breather so i am going to sit and just try and save my strength for later in case anything happens Shortly after that, a patient came in who was referred for PPH, which is bleeding after delivery. She had a vaginal tear which was already sutured at the clinic from which she came, but she had a very low HB. I had to follow up bloods for her. during the night but if there are admissions between now and that time i have to get up and still go check them out along with my partner if they are a lot of number so yeah i am about to snooze you guys and i really hope it's going to be a quiet night i pray to be a quiet night so 
Hi, I'm just from booking a patient for a C-section. She came in as a case of IUFD, which means that the baby unfortunately has passed away within the mother's stomach. And so we have tried to deliver that child, the mother, there is very poor maternal effort. We have tried vacuum delivery, we have really, really tried for the past two hours, that's the patient that we have been on, but it has been unsuccessful. And so we've had to book her for a C-section. And it's just really sad that she'll have to go through an operation and the fetus is not even viable. But we have really tried and unfortunately there's nothing more that we can do because there is very, very poor maternal effort. Even from the clinic, there has been poor maternal effort. We have tried to augment nothing. We have tried vacuum nothing. Hi guys, so time check. Time check, it is quarter past eight and I am exhausted. I had another patient who had already delivered. It wasn't me who delivered her though but she started to bleed out. The amount of bleeding did not really reach the level of PPH because PPH it has to be an estimated blood loss of above 500 in vaginal delivery 1000 liters section. So this woman, her blood loss was about 300. So we gave oxytocin of course because the uterus was a bit atonic. We gave oxytocin um, and we check to make sure she doesn't have any tears of which she did not have any tears vagina or cervical and then we also took her blood work and we took it for grouping and testing we took her uh, full blood count to check the hp in case she needed transfusion so yeah that essentially was my night um yeah i'm really tired i'm waiting for the morning team to come over and then we're gonna do the handover and after the handover i am going home to sleep Hi beautiful people, so I'm about to start filming um, my YouTube video. I am filming two videos which I assume you have watched before. This one, the first one is what I wish I learned before becoming a doctor. And the second one is um, study tips, how you study in different um, areas of your medical journey. So yeah, those are the videos I'm about to film right now. And then I'm going to film a reel probably for my Instagram. And then after that, I'm going to try and rest. I haven't slept from the time that I came back from the hospital. Hold on, let me sit down. I haven't slept from the time that I came back from the hospital. I just got in, um, took a shower and got dressed and now I'm about to film my videos and then after that I'll probably will uh, sit down and rest. Update on the patient that I told you guys about, the one who we had to take to theater because we were unable to deliver. It turns out that the scan, the estimated fetal weight was actually way off and when the baby was born and they weighed the baby it weighed 4.8 kg guys 4.8 kg you can imagine how big that baby was so that was a very interesting case that i had all right so let me get into filming my videos hey guys good morning so uh time check it is currently 7 30 and i'm eating breakfast today is monday the 4th of October and today I am in the ward. I am in the gynecology ward. Today is actually my baby's birthday so I'm going to come back and do preparations for that. Yeah, I'll come back and do preparations for that. Come, come say hi to the people. This is my puppy. His name is Alaska. <laughs> he said you can manage an incomplete abortion in two ways. Surgical so much for having a short round um time check it is now 14 hours i arrived home 30 minutes uh, the consultant came to the ward and decided to see all the patients so it was a major ward round and we went from patient to patient to patient in the whole ward which was really good because i like such ward rounds 
um, because you really do learn a lot, number one, and also number two, I just love the fact that they have an input or a say on the management of the patients. But yeah, it was a really, really long ward round, like really, really long, guys, like from eight until 13 hours. It was really long and we're just standing the whole time. So I've just gotten home right now. Uh, my helper is about to come through and then I'm going to take a shower and get ready for the birthday celebrations. time check it is now 7 a.m and today is tuesday the 5th of october i'm about to head off for work uh, today is going to be another work day so that means reaching at the hospital doing my rounds and once i'm done with my rounds i can come home i don't have anything planned for today so we'll see how the day goes but that's pretty much going to be my day all right see you <laughs> look okay to visit me oh. I spent the day with my friend and then went for dinner with my cousin at the mall. Afterwards, I did some minor shopping and that was the end of my day. Today I am in OPD, I am in court for the whole day in OPD. So OPD is basically your gynecology cases and um, any cases in pregnancy below the gestational age of 28 weeks. You see all those cases in OPD. And then I'm um, also doing your post CS patients, your post cesarean patients, your post natal patients that need to come back to review me because of high babies and everything that others have seen in OPD. So that's what I'm basically doing today. Um, I arrived at 8 and it was quite busy. I didn't have the opportunity to pick up my phone. And like I said right now, it's 11 30 and at least the files have cleared out. So I will try to film a little bit of this stuff in there. I'm also going to give you guys a tour of the emergency room that we have. We don't have any patients, by the way, in the emergency room right now. So I'm filming without any patients. So this is a standard bed in the emergency room. Every bed has got its own cardex table where you can see the patient from. We have a delivery box to help with deliveries and a PPH box for any patient that may undergo postpartum hemorrhage, which is severe bleeding after delivery. We have oxygen tanks, we have concentrators, and each and every bed has a monitor. The emergency trolley is thoroughly equipped to help with your initial assessment of your patient, that is your ABCs. We have literally every fluid, we have all the emergency medications that may be needed, and everything else is in hands reach. So for my uh, one plus or two plus. One, one, plus. one plus or two plus. And then SP is the one now where you have three plus, four plus. Mm. So, time check it is 1310 and i am still in opd honestly today is a very quiet morning i'm going to go and get a quick lunch right now and then after that i'll be heading back to my room and i'll wait to see if any patients are going to come through hey guys so it is a very 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 quiet day like i literally do not have any patients i've been sitting here for an hour and i haven't seen anyone and it just sucks that I can't leave because of the one who's on call. I think that's the worst thing about being a GRM or like you're on call, but you can't leave because you're the one who has to behave if a patient arrives. So I was just called to certify a patient at BID. BID is essentially that brought in dead. So patients that come to the hospital, but are already dead upon arrival, go straight to BID. And then as doctors, we rotate as a timetable of who gets to certify. So this week it's my department that is certifying and so they came to call me and I went and I certified the patient. And I am now back in OPD waiting for more patients to come. About an hour ago, I was called up to the gynecology ward to review a patient. So there's a patient who came in. Um, she's a G3P2, meaning she's been pregnant three times. She delivered twice. And both times when she delivered, she did so via caesarean section. So she has two previous caesars and then she was pregnant this one time but unfortunately she had a miscarriage. And so when she had the miscarriage, um, just now in the ward she expelled, the fetus came out but the placenta was retained. And so the nursing staff put on oxytocin. Oxytocin is a muscle contractant to try and get the placenta out. 
but then that did not work for the past um 14 minutes they were not able to get the placenta out and so they called me and so i went to review the patient and when i found the patient of course the placenta was still there i tried to insert my hand and i could feel it on the anterior wall try to manually evacuate it it wasn't budging and we tried and tried and tried and it wasn't budging and so i ended up calling up my second on call and my second on call who wasn't available at that time i think it was in theater called the consultant to come and review the patient and so um the consultant tried to manually evacuate the placenta but it wasn't successful unfortunately and that patient had to be booked for theater so that was a very interesting case I assume it is placenta in Creta because she has a history of two previous seizures. Like that is a very high risk factor, especially if the placenta attached to where the previous um, the wound where the previous seizure was done. So that was a very interesting case that I saw. Um, the woman is stable, thankfully. So what they've done is they've taken her to theater and they're going to try and um, manually evacuate it under anesthesia unfortunately if that doesn't happen then i think the last resolve is going to have to be for them to actually do an operation and open her up i really really hope that's not the case though being opened up three times no um i really hope that they manage to just get it out manually and she won't have to undergo that hi beautiful people so time check it is now 8 10 and i have just arrived at, host at the hospital Today I am in the labor ward, so it's going to be an interesting day. I am on call from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. So I'll definitely update you guys during the day of how the call is going to go. 10 years later. Guys, when I say I am tired, today was like a proper definition of what labor ward is, when it means to get crazy. Um, time check it is 15 hours and from the time I arrived at 8 a.m. I literally haven't sat down I've been reviewing patients I've been admitting patients I've been delivering patients like at one point we had like four women delivering at once Oof, it was crazy it was crazy it's, it's still crazy I just told them like I'm gonna faint like I swear I'm gonna fall down and drop if I don't go and eat so this is me now coming to the little duty room eating my sandwiches i carried sandwiches for work today um a tuna sandwich and i just need to eat and then i have to go back i feel like i'm gonna drop um in the area that i am antenato days at the local clinics are usually on thursday tuesday and thursday and today being a thursday this is the result it's just crazy like patients are pouring in um patients are delivering it's crazy it's really crazy i'm going to do i'm going to share with you guys some interesting cases that we have had um i had an aph patient which is antipartum hemorrhage this is a woman beyond the gestational age of 28 weeks which is seven months but prior to delivery who is bleeding actively bleeding so she was actually um 32 if i'm not mistaken 32 weeks and she was referred for antipartum hemorrhage and so the first thing you know like when you get antipartum hemorrhage you start making a differential um placenta rupture placenta previa ruptured uterus heavy show all these things and so um you have to get the details of the type of bleeding that she was experiencing how much what it looked like did it have clots was it bright red i got those details and then sent her for an urgent urgent scan and it turned out that it was actually a low-lying placenta and then also to make things worse if i could say um, it was an undiagnosed twin pregnancy meaning she actually had twins and it wasn't diagnosed at any point during her antenatal she never did a scan and so twin pregnancy with anti with a low lying placenta um the placenta was just marginal it wasn't necessarily like in the horse in the cervix and so my senior came to assess and advise that we allow her to deliver vaginal because she was pre um preterm on top of that like i said she was 32 weeks so we ended up just assessing her keeping an eye on her and then she ended up delivering spontaneously within the next hour and she delivered both twins we were immediately taken to nick icu scab unit which is like icu for neonatals newly born premature babies and so yeah that was an interesting case i had that woman um really touched me her story really touched me because she's been pregnant seven times but she only has two children all the other children she has lost and um she two of them 
she had miscarriages. One actually reached um, nine months, but unfortunately it was a stillbirth. One passed away at the age of four. And so she's been pregnant seven times and she literally only has two children. And then this is the one that came preterm. And I really, really pray that the children are going to survive, the twins. But I just really felt bad about her story. Like when you hear such stories, it's really, it's sad. It's really sad. Okay, so I am done with my lunch. And I'm so tired. I'm so, so tired. I just want to take a nap. Um, 15, 10. I was literally a 10 minute lunch. And I am going to head back inside and continue reassessing patients. I have four patients to admit. And I have two to reassess. I'm sure that's going to take me like about maybe an hour, an hour and a half maximum. And then at that time, the ones that I assessed at 12 will be due for reassessment, I'm pretty sure. So that's going to be my day, guys. Mm. One eternity later. Hey, guys. So time check, I don't even have my watch because I was conducting a delivery but it should be about 17.20 now, just shy of 17.30. I am exhausted, I am so tired. Um, I'm really sorry guys, I really wanted to film a lot today. I really wanted you guys to see a lot of what I was doing in the labor ward but it was crazy. I, I literally didn't have the time to pick up my phone. Um, we've had so many patients today it's just been one after the other I just sat down for like five minutes I think I did film my lunch the time I filmed my lunch I sat down for 10 minutes and that was it I went back to the ward and uh, this is me sitting down again it's just been a crazy crazy day it's almost 6 p.m. and the night team is going to be here so what happens is at 6 p.m. the night team arrives and then you go bed by bed and do a handover, tell them about the patient, the condition they are receiving the patient because they're the ones who are going to monitor them uh, during the night. And then after the handover, you go home, you're done. The handover, depending on the number of patients, can be anything from 10 minutes to an hour. Today we have a lot of patients, so I know the handover will take an hour. So pretty much on a knock off like after 19. So yeah. Hey guys. Okay, so I am just about to go home, but I am so 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 happy because today, no matter how crazy busy it was, I managed to do my first bridge delivery. Um, I have delivered a thousand cephalic. I haven't had a bridge delivery in the world since I started in this department. And today, for the first time, actually had a bridge delivery who we decided to do it, uh, allow to progress in labor. And um, I managed to deliver her. And I'm just really happy that I had that opportunity. So we did an assisted uh, bridge delivery um, all the way until the shoulders were out, the anterior and the posterior shoulder were both out. And then after that, um, I performed a flexion maneuver. And when you flex the head, it allows for the head to deliver out of the vaginal canal. It was just so fun. It was really, really fun. Um, yeah so i'm really excited today i finally got to deliver a bridge um presentation that is one for the books mm -hmm. 